welcome to The Buzz, Waynesburg University's only campus and entertainment news show. I'm your host, Lindsay Stinger, and today I'm joined with Rachel Mangan and Rebecca Vaughn. Tonight's topics range from Apple TV taking on even more of our lives, as well as a cookie that will make you the star at all the holiday parties. It's all coming up right here on The Buzz. It's a Saturday night. You know what that means. Time to party. Sam is having a good time watching sports, drinking beer, playing Pong, not a care in the world for Sam. Nobody at the party stops Sam. They let him walk out the door with his keys even though he was stumbling having a hard time to stand up. What happened less than 10 minutes later would change Sam's life forever. Before we get into the entertainment world, let's talk about what's happening around Woo. Sadly, spooky season has come to an end, but not before the students were able to head to the Beehive for some Halloween bingo. Adam Morganti has more. On Halloween Eve, Waynesburg University students gathered in the Beehive for Halloween bingo. It wasn't a typical bingo night as students dressed up in the costumes to get into Halloween spirit if they weren't already. Some costumes students wore include Buzz Lightyear, a butterfly, a squirrel, and Disney princesses, and many more. Since students could dress up in costumes, it was an easy choice for them to play bingo. Hoping to win some prizes as well as scare some other people. Well, I mean, I came last year and I had some fun, so I figured I'd get a cool costume and just come and be creepy and try and get a prize. There were a plethora of prizes students could win, such as candy, a blanket, a hat, and a water bottle. It was obvious what the inspiration was behind students' costumes. I'm supposed to be Pennywise from the movie It. And I just try to get as creepy as possible. It's like a creepy gesture to match my creepy laugh I can do, so... Halloween Bingo Night was a big hit for everyone involved. For WCTV News, I'm Adam Morganti. With Christmas just around the corner, okay, two months, but it's never too early to start baking Christmas cookies, August Lawfer shows us how to make the perfect chocolate chip caramel cookie.
Apple TV takes even more, and the Spidey might be getting a sequel. All that coming up after this. In a world where Apple products practically run our lives, they have kept their hands off of our television streaming. Until now, since they released the Apple TV in September, the next practical step was at its very own set of channels. Rebecca, thoughts? Apple has recently launched its own new subscription service to compete with the streaming service competition on today's market. To use the new service, which is being called Apple TV Plus, you'll have to pay a fee of $4.99 a month, which is dramatically lower than Netflix's $9 to $16 price range. But if you've purchased a new Apple product since the beginning of September and you've signed in with your Apple ID, you'll be automatically subscribed to the service for one full year for free. This new subscription service is located on the pre-installed Apple TV app and is available on your Mac, your Apple TV, your iOS devices, and your iPad devices. The shows for the streaming service will live in the dedicated Apple TV row in the app's home screen. Shows such as The Morning Show, Snoopy in Space, the talk show Oprah's Book Club, and many more titles will be available to stream or download. Are your spidey senses tingling? If not, they may be broken because it was just announced that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is getting a, drum roll please, sequel, because clearly there isn't enough already. Rachel, I know you're probably pretty passionate about this, so take it away. If you watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse when it came out in 2018, you probably were demanding a sequel, just like we did when we saw The Incredibles as kids. The only difference is we don't have to wait 14 unbearable years for a Spider-Verse sequel. It was announced last week that the follow-up to the animated movie will hit theaters on April 8th, 2022. So it's only two more years until we get to see Miles Morales and all the other Spider-Man variants back in action. As of yesterday, it was also confirmed that Japanese Spider-Man will be in the new movie. Producer Phil Lord responded to a tweet from a fan who was offering to design the character so that he could be included in the film by saying that he was already designed. I'm definitely interested to see where Sony takes this franchise because it's the one Spider-Man they haven't messed up yet. We're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna talk about how being nice truly pays off. Don't go anywhere, you're watching The Buzz. DeGeneres announced that she will be receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Golden Globes next year. DeGeneres has been winning the hearts and spreading love for the past 25 years. She will be only one of two recipients of the Carol Burnett Award. I know I love Ellen, but Rachel, what do you have to say about it? Ellen DeGeneres will be receiving the Carol Burnett Award at this year's Golden Globes. She will be the second recipient of the award, the first being Carol Burnett herself. This award is essentially the equivalent of the Cecil B. DeMille Award in film. According to CNN, the award is chosen by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association Board of Directors and presented annually to a person who has made outstanding contributions to the television medium on or off the screen. Aside from her TV accolades, she is also a champion for LGBTQ rights and a philanthropist. 
This is a much more positive turn of events for Ellen, considering the recent social media backlash she received after sitting next to George Bush at an NFL game and calling him her friend. It's the part of the show where we jump off the big screen and onto the interweb. Rebecca, what do you got for us? All right, well, my tweet of the week is just a nice, uplifting tweet to help ease the stress of the week. So it comes from the Twitter page, at Facts. Uh, remember the five simple rules to being happy. Free your heart from hatred, free your mind from worries, live simply, give more, and expect less. That is really uplifting, considering that we are done with midterms, inching towards finals. So mine has to do with Halloween hair, even though Halloween is past. So this is from BJ Colin Gello, and it starts with, a little girl with green hair chalk just asked me if my hair was dyed for Halloween. When I told her it's green all year round, she turned to her dad and screamed, you said green hair was illegal after Halloween. Why did you lie? <laughs> Oh man, All right. keep staying with the holiday thing. Mine comes from a alumni actually. Mara Fenske tweets, "'Tis the season to have three dozen tabs open at all at one time because the Christmas shopping has officially commenced." Mara, I 100% agree with you. The only thing that would make that a little bit better is Mariah Carey just jamming out in the back. Well, we're gonna hop off here for a second and when we come back, we've got all the burning opinions that we've been dying to share with you. Don't go anywhere, you're watching The Buzz. Have you ever been to the Everly Library? If not, you should, because it's great. They have books of all different genres. History, biography, fiction. Try The Evolution of Life, Life of Pi, or Jurassic Park. So what if books aren't your thing? Try movies, like Frozen, or TV shows, like Lost. Books and DVDs aren't the only thing, though. Take a trip to the second floor. Welcome to the Writing Center. These tutors will tell you everything you need to know about writing a paper and the help provider essays. Now let's head back down. Behold, the Knox Learning Center. Need to print something out five minutes before your next class because you procrastinated? No problem. You can also print off pictures of dogs. Because, well, you can. So grab your homework, laptop, and textbook, and study diligently. Bring your lunch, too. Actually, you can't. That's illegal. Now you know the Everly Library. Stop by any time. Seriously, it's open all week. Welcome back to The Buzz, Waynesburg University's only campus and news entertainment show. I'm your host, Lindsay, and I'm joined with Rachel and Rebecca. We've reached the commentary part of our show, so ladies, what's on your mind? Well, uh, can we talk about Harry Styles and his new upcoming album? Talk about yeah, Harry Styles. like that's, that's yeah, no reason not to. <laughs> well, it's he's dropping his next album on December thirteenth, which is the end of our semester, so little early Christmas gift for us. And a lot of people are saying that his album cover it's very eighties, and he's looking like um, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt from the eighties. We cannot go wrong with either of those. <laughs> yeah, so. We're glad to have that album cover. It looks real good. But this is coming two years after his last album, which was entitled Harry Styles. Oh, yeah, it's, it was, been, it's been a hot minute. Yeah, like, yeah. it's been a hot We're minute. We're ready for the next album. But I'm, I'm very excited to see where this goes. Like, is it going to have an 80s feel to it? Because you know how some artists like to mm -hmm. try to like, throw yeah. back to the vintage yep. thing. So I'm hoping it does that. Um, but he's also holding a like release party for fans to get tickets to in California, but they're only $25, which is oh, surprising. And yeah. some people online are saying One Direction could never, which... <laughs> Tough. Yep. That sounds like a call out. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the album. I'm That's excited. all you got for us? Yeah. All right, Rachel, what you got? All right, we're going to talk about Disney Plus. So. The, along with the whole Apple TV getting a streaming service, mm -hmm. of course, Disney owns the world, so they have to have a streaming service. Yeah. And I was devastated when I first heard that they were that Disney was doing their own streaming service because that means they're going to pull all my favorite movies off of Netflix. So I'm like, no matter what, I was going to invest in getting Disney Plus because I can't not have those movies, those TV shows. But as it turns out, if you're a Verizon customer, Disney Plus is offering a year's free subscription if you sign up through Verizon. I think they haven't released all the details yet on how to do that, 
I'm very excited because now as a broke college student, I get to have Disney Plus for free for a year. And I'm super excited because especially with the Marvel side of Disney, they are coming out with all these new TV shows that I'm super excited to see, especially mm -hmm. um, uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon because they were yeah. two of my favorite characters in the MCU. Now they're getting their own TV show. I am thrilled. <laughs> Yeah, it seems as being a Verizon customer, it seems like you kind of dodge the bullet there for a hot second. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, my my commentary is about Cheer Dad. Have you guys seen the video yes. of the guy? He's going ham. I was I was loving every second of it. So apparently, it's just a Virginia era guy who's went to his daughter's football game. Well, not his. She was obviously cheerleading, and he was just the ultimate cheer dad. He knew all of the steps. Was even like dance. He was dancing and even did like a kick. And I was like, whoa. All right. I get. He was practicing that. But the video went viral after um, a Friday night's football game, and the guy who posted it, actually, his caption was, this guy right here needs to go viral, which it did. By far the best cheer dad of the year, this dude rocks, go York Falcons. And in the past weekend, like just since Friday, it has gone, it has reached over 3.3 million views on Facebook with over 46,000 shares on Facebook. That's insane. Like, that's so cute. Like, I could definitely see my dad doing that, so like I almost put together, but I was I was loving it. See, my dad was very supportive of all my extracurriculars, went to all my musicals, all my, I was in marching band. I could never see him dancing along to any of my routines if I was a cheerleader. I mean, he'd cheer, he'd, he'd cheer me on, but he wouldn't be that into it, so that's impressive. Yeah, he definitely was. All right, well, when we come back, we are going to talk about all of the topics that you heard a little bit earlier on the show. Don't go anywhere, you're watching The Buzz. What's happening here? We're making a PSA smile. for the yellow jacket. Just like act natural. Welcome back to The Buzz. Did you miss us? Well, lucky for you, we're back with the discussion segment of the show. All right, so Apple is taking over everything. Any thoughts? What you got? Um, I'm a little surprised at how low their price is starting. They're starting at just about $5 a month. And comparing that to most other streaming services, it's dramatically lower. Like Netflix, is their lowest one is $9. Like, yeah. It's a good competition because who doesn't want to pay less? It definitely is, but like if you look at it, how much does Apple own? 80% mm -hmm. of the world. Yes. So, no, that's why Disney. would they? Disney okay, owns well, 80%. Apple and Disney are just like going head to head for who's just going to control the entire <laughs> universe. But Netflix only has really Netflix, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So like now all these big companies are starting and Netflix is almost getting crushed, yes. which stinks because that was like almost the pioneer of TV streaming. And now it's just like... <laughs> Like, come on now. Well, I think the part that, because um, I know a lot of the services that are pooling their stuff from Netflix were all, they had all their stuff on Netflix's platform before. I think mm -hmm. Apple, is everything on there going to be original for the most part, do you know? Or, or I, they, I hope not. Do they have the rights? Do they have the rights to like rerun older TV shows? I, I think Apple has the rights for everything. I think so, they like, have I would the not rights. be. Because okay. I were. would say that might be, if they don't, that might be why it's significantly lower, because you have to pay to get the rights to do that. Mm -hmm. okay. They have, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have less sense. of a selection, possibly, so it might be like a really good platform for original content, because um, even Facebook has like their own like TV t style streaming service these days. Jumping completely, completely in left field, did you see Facebook's dating app? Like, they have a dating profile now. I didn't Did see it that. launch? I know they were talking about it, doing it. It's been it. like on my 
like my actual Facebook app, like it's like match with people in your area. And it's just, it cracks me up. And I'm like, oh my word. Maybe it, maybe it hasn't popped up on mine because like it sees that I'm in a relationship and it's just like, don't bother with her. It's fine. (laughs) (laughs) On to the next one. But isn't that creepy though? If it's doing that, because if it It sees that you are, it's just like, you don't need a dating app. But if it sees that you're single, it's like, honey, (laughs) let let me show you some everything (laughs) at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's super creepy when you think about it. But yeah, I'm not really surprised that Apple is lower, like their prices are so much lower just because they have so many other things that are bringing in um, just revenue. Yeah. And Netflix doesn't and Hulu and all that stuff. I can honestly say I have a love-hate relationship with Apple and Apple products because I own all Apple products. And I like them because I sync them all up with each other. Which is nice, but that also comes to bite you in the butt. I've never had an issue where it's bitten me in the butt because if I don't have my laptop but I need to pull up like a piece of homework, I can get on like with the cloud, like I have access to everything from every device. Super convenient, but the downside is is Apple products are so expensive and I hate the fact that the updates slowly kill off older devices and force you to buy new ones. So like when I had my um, iPhone SE, like the, as soon as the iPhone 10, came out it just started it, everything started going so slow and you're and like it's immediately <sighs> like they give you one phone in between releases where it's like okay we'll, we'll we'll continue to like update your phone it's fine but as soon as you get like two phones of updates worth it just it kills the old ones off and I hate the fact that like because I have a two-year contract with my yeah, and then provider. almost by the exact same time that it, the second year comes around like it's a few months in between the releases and then mm-hmm. and it's miserable yeah because you have to either wait it out or like you're I, I still buy the older model because it's cheaper <laughs> I'm in college yeah so I've personally never been able to get to the whole two years because I just break oh, them yeah. around a year and a half but hey that's whatever um moving on to our second topic spider-man Calm down, your time will come. All right, what do you got about it? Um, I'm excited to see where it goes as the second movie. The first one was, I mean, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the second one. But that's about it for me. I'm not a huge fan, like I'm not going to go. You're not this one. Yes, (laughs) I'm not going to go live my life by it, but I will go see the movie, and I'm just excited to see where it goes. It's a good story. All right, honey. Breathe. All you right. can release. <laughs> All right. I just want to tell Sony, congratulations. You didn't screw up a superhero yes, movie. You've been like Thank so you. against Sony owning any kind of superhero because anything. Because they're so bad at it. And I'm, I still get anxiety at Sony having any sort of rights to the live action Spider-Man Tom Holland because Disney has proved that they can handle it. Sony has not. They, Andrew Garfield. That's all I have to say there. But Into the Spider-Verse has such a unique animation style, and it's not like anything you see where, like, all the Disney stuff has its very specific brand of animation, and then you have, like, the anime style, where this was just something completely different than what I've seen before. And it worked perfectly. And they brought in all these different Spider-Man characters that you've read in the comics and that a lot of, uh, I know I'm very familiar with. Wait, 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 are are you one of those ones that like literally read the comics before it comes out? Well, I read them years ago. I feel like you just, okay, I was gonna say. I haven't read comics in a while because I don't have time, but like I was super excited like when the Infinity War and all those movies came out because I was super invested in like those Mm storylines because I know in Civil War in the com- well one version of the comics because there's multiple universes, multiple endings, all that fun stuff. It's they put so much into those that it's hard to keep track. But I know in one version, Captain America was supposed to die, and that's when Bucky gets the shield. Yeah. But they changed it and pushed it to the end of Endgame to make it happen to sort of kill off Cap's character and then push into the Disney Plus series. Disney is incredibly smart with how they do this. It's all very strategic. Okay, but has Disney screwed up anything ever? Ever? I just remember no. being No, the answer ter- is no. I remember uh, being petrified of the Black Al- Cauldron. Oh, no. I was going to say Horrified Alice in of that movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but Alice in Wonderland, like, just oh. terrified me when I was a child. Oh, that, that just, oh, whole well, if you, did you ever watch The Black Cauldron? Like, because that was from Disney. I've never Dark heard Ages. of that in my entire life. But it was fine. one of, like, their, like, Dark Age, like, movies. And 
number one, it's terrifying. It is not a kids movie. I don't know. Is it who, supposed to be a kids movie? Yeah, it's it's a Disney kids movie. Like it's the same style of like Snow White. Like it's that animation style, but it's horrifying. It's basically this grim reaper like Death Valley type story, and like one of the like the one character commits suicide at the uh, end. And like, this is a kids movie. It's a kids movie. It was horrifying. So there's Disney went down a very dark path for a little bit. Yeah, I would say not a not a huge fan, but overall, I know I'm excited. I'm just kind of, I'm one of the ones. I'm the hater. I'm the hater. It's fine. I'll take it. I'm just not a huge fan of all of the superhero stuff. But that's just because I never like I grew up with you know My Little Pony. Like I was mm -hmm. never a huge superhero person, but obviously I am. It's like head to head with us. I'm just like super against it. She's like, give me all of them. And yeah. I was like, yeah, well, okay. I think too what makes it unique is that this is the first Spider-Man movie that we've had that isn't the Peter Parker story. This is the Miles Morales story. Okay, yeah. And his is, yeah. His is a lot different. And I think his um, features a little bit more comedy. I mean, Peter Parker's funny, but that's because Sony made him funny. Disney made him funny. But he's actually like, the Miles Morales character is approached very differently and the running theory is that at some point they have to have, have you seen the Spider-Man meme where it's like the Spider-Man pointing at the Spider-Man? <laughs> yes, yes. I think that they need to take that idea, that meme, and turn it into like a crazy post credit scene where it's animated versions of Tom that would Holland. Be, yeah, that would be good. That would be, that would be funny. Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield and then the Miles Morales voice actor yeah. all walking into a room and kind of doing that the office scene. Where they're like, where they're, and they're like, I'm Peter Parker. I'm yeah, Peter yeah, Parker yeah. because it's three people playing the same character, like the exact yeah. same version in different ways. So I think that needs to be included at some That's point. That's a killer idea. Throw that somewhere, give it to somebody, <laughs> maybe we'll be able to win an award. Come on. I mean, Speaking, hey, hey, that girl wanted Japanese Spider Man. She got mm -hmm. Japanese Spider Man. Yeah. So. Okay, you're right. You're right. Speaking of winning awards, America's sweetheart, the love of my life. She's literally just such a sweet person. I've been a fan of Ellen DeGeneres for ages. I remember coming home at like in third grade and I would get off the bus and my mom and I would just sit down and watch Ellen DeGeneres for hours. Well, the hours. I was about to say four hours, but for the hour that she was on. And she's just, she's just such a nice person. Like the world would be so much better if everyone was just an Ellen DeGeneres or some type of... I think Ellen is where people say like, I wish people were more like dogs because they're so innocent and happy. Mm. Ellen, she really Ellen is. is a yes. dog personified. Yeah. She just... I agree. Spews happiness. She really is. Like, even, you can even look at it, like, the way that she handled, I know you talked about how she had a lot of backlash on social media. The way that she handled that was so good. Like, did you see the video? Did you well, see the video? Just, she ended it with, like, you don't have to agree with someone to be nice to them. Yeah, but she, like, oh, almost, wow. she made a joke out of it. Like, she was like, oh, I had to hide my, what was it, like, my cheese hat in Portia's purse. Because she was in, like, the opposing team's. Because uh, it was a Dallas, they, yeah, they were yeah. at a Dallas Cowboys game against, um, they were in Dallas, but they were Packers fans. Yeah, and yes, 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 yes. And it was just so, and she was just like, instead of doing the whole Democrat, Republican thing. But yeah, I agree. She's just such a nice person. The other really cool thing, speaking of like dog personality personified, is she's actually came out with like a pet line for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and so oh, wait, of is it a stuff oh, is, is it of sweaters so, with dogs? There's sweaters, there's beds, there's toys. <laughs> so there's so much stuff. It's so cute. I love Christmas. So, I love dogs. I'm for it. I love Ellen DeGeneres. Everything about this story just makes me incredibly happy. And I'm that, about to be a dog. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I like watching your game show too. Like Oh, yeah. they're so oh funny when gosh. they bring in people. And like my favorite thing is like when they pull them in, they're all so excited to just either be on TV, be around Ellen. They don't care they just, that they're yeah. embarrassed. They can't yeah. stop jumping, and yes, I think that's hilarious. Yes. They always yes. jump up and down to where they're almost on top of her, and she's just like, you know, this is normal. This is a normal reaction. It's fine. Yeah, my like life goal is to be her intern. Like, just to, I don't even care. Like, I don't want a career. I just want to intern with Ellen DeGeneres. She's just, because you've seen all the crazy things they make the interns do. Mm -hmm. Like being one of those people that scare them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where they jump out of the yeah. furniture yeah, or they the come box. out in the costumes. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's just, and my favorite thing is when she like gives them the weirdest gifts ever, like of her face, like a t-shirt with her face on it. And I'm just like, <laughs> what is happening right now? The other one that gets me too, in terms of like the game show, the, the musical chairs one, I get oh, yeah. legitimately people are like, offended when people cheat. Because you can always tell when someone's cheating because they 
will turn and immediately go to a chair. They know where it is because they don't have the stupid mask thing yeah, either up yeah. or down the whole way. And I get really mad and root so hard against them. <laughs> you're like, you're done. I don't like, want you to win. This Sorry, is Ellen. Ellen. You're cheating. We don't we do not do that We don't here. cheat. We are pure and just innocent human beings when you <laughs> walk across the stage. I don't care. All right. Well, that's going to do it all for this. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for being here with me. And thanks for tuning in. You're watching The Buzz. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.